Good morning, everybody. It's Serafina, and I'm here with your daily tarot insight. So before we begin, I would like to call upon the spirit of the universe that loves us unconditionally. I would like to call upon the spirits of this land, of this island, and of this ocean, and I thank them for holding the space and for their ancient wisdom. I would like to call upon my guides, archangels, ancestors, and higher self, and I thank them for their presence and guidance with this reading. So the full moon in Libra is on Saturday. Technically, the moon is still in Virgo, but she's going to be moving into Libra very soon, which means that we can feel the ripening of the energies of the Libra full moon uh, quite strongly. I feel them a bit strongly. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about this axis of Aries with Libra, right? Aries is all about self-determination, will, power, how we exert ourselves into the world because it's very closely related to Mars. And right on the other axis, we have Libra. And Libra is all about your relationship with others, about harmony, about balance. So full moons naturally are opposites and we have, you know, a little bit of tension going on. So this plays out different for everybody, but mostly it's about like how you are as an individual, what talents, what sense of identity you have, what way do you want to project yourself into the world and how that balances out with your own personal relationships. Of course, the seventh house and sometimes Libra is related to romantic relationships, but ultimately it's all about being in right relationship with everything around you. And how do you make sure you're in right relationship with everything around you? Well, by being in right relationship with yourself. So, dear beloved spirit of the universe, what loving guidance is there for the collective today? We have the Four of Cups with the angel Melahel. It says healing capacity, safety in trouble. So right now I'm using this tarot deck, which is basically the angel deck. We're, we're only going to be using angel decks today. What further guidance is there for the collective today? We have the Six of Wands with God Who Took Evil, Longevity. What further guidance is there for the collective today? We have the High Priestess with the angel Yelahiah. God, the eternal lasting. Okay. What further guidance is there today for the collective? We have the sun. With the angel Mehiel, the vivifying God, restoration of life, protection. Okay, and to compliment, I'm going to pick an oracle from the Archangel Gabriel oracle deck. What further guidance is there? Okay, deserving. You, like all God's children, deserve happiness, health, and love. Okay, so, so we start off with the Four of Cups. The Four of Cups is a card of us being able to recognize the abundance and the love that is around us. Sometimes we're so focused on certain aspects of life and how we want them to go that we are oblivious to the blessings that are around us. And I'm really feeling like that's tying to this card of deserving, right? Sometimes we forget to acknowledge that not everything in our life has to be a struggle. And when that happens, we seem to just kind of, you know, get lost in how we expect things to be. 
instead of recognizing the gifts that are around us that are wanting to come into our life. But abundance can only come in if we are allowing it. And how do we allow it? By knowing that we are deserving of it. So the Four of Cups kind of speaks of like a state of boredom or more an inability to be able to see what is around us by only focusing on what we expect and not allowing the true gifts to come in. The Six of Wands speaks to being celebrated. It's a card of victory. But with this really, this card really speaks of is us and our ability to be seen. In order to be celebrated by our friends, by our community, there has to be kind of like an openness. Like if we were a flower and a flower is blooming, we can see the beauty of the flower when it's blooming. But when we don't allow ourselves to be seen, then how can others recognize our own unique beauty? So when the Six of Wands comes up, it can be a moment that we're being celebrated and recognized by others. But today I'm feeling more that it's, it's us allowing ourselves to be seen by others and and by sharing or by being luminous unto ourselves why do i say that because we have the high priestess the high priestess is a card that speaks of us trusting our own intuition of us kind of like weaving our own understanding with divinity and everything around us so it could be that some of us are receiving, are receiving certain insights, certain instincts that are coming in for us. And, and we need to like be able to pay attention to like the, the subtlety of like a fabric, let's put it that way, like the subtlety of what's being woven into our lives. Because something is definitely being woven and it is a victorious thing. It's a good thing. It's something that's allowing us to blossom and to come out. And it's not direct. It's not a direct message because a high priestess is coming to tell us that, but we already sense it. It's already in our energetic field. It's something that's already there. And how beautiful to finish off this reading with the sun, right? The sun is a card of luminousness. It's a card of us being able to tap into our inner child. So if we notice, we have three cherub there playing some trumpets. And if we observe the sun on the Rider Waite tarot, um, we, there's a naked baby. And that naked baby has like a piece of fabric next to it. And it kind of represents us purging or us letting go of our attachments in this material realm so that we can be naked. Can, you know, we can be naked in front of God. We can be naked in front of everybody else without any inhibitions. So I really feel that this guidance for today is all about how much, how deserving do we feel on a day-to-day -day basis? What type of language are we using with ourselves? You know, because our language, you know, for anybody who speaks more than one language, it's, it's really easy to note how differently we construct our world by using, you know, different ways of understanding it, by using different uh, languages, by using different, even jokes. Jokes are really good. Humor is a really good way of understanding our world and kind of like playing with the words, right? So if, if we come to actually recognize the way that we are constructing our world through our language, how is it that we are speaking about God? How are we speaking about our talents? How are we speaking about ourselves? How do I talk to my own self? And that is a really good reflection of how worthy we are feeling, of how deserving we feel uh, to be happy, to be healthy, and to be loved, right? So we're starting off with the Four of Cups. And it's saying there's something in your sphere that you're probably not recognizing, which is a blessing that is coming in. Or on the alternate side, it could be something that you are trying to give others, a gift you are trying to give others, and it's not being received because there's an aspect about being seen. There's an aspect about us putting ourselves out there exactly as we are and being celebrated for that. And we have a higher understanding of our place in the cosmos. And not only that, but of the language that we are weaving with everything around us. We are tapping into our intuitive abilities, which is another one of the greatest gifts that came or that is coming right now with the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction. It's all about us acknowledging that 
you know, there is divinity outside of us for sure. And there's divinity within us. And that's how I can recognize it. And so once I start paying more attention to the subtle signs, to my insights, to my instincts, to those thoughts that come to me, and I don't know where they come from, but once I act on them, good things come about it. That's what's being asked to be cultivated here. And the high priestess can really help us with that. So once again, I feel that it's about us coming in to our own intuitive self by marrying paradoxes and then allowing ourselves to blossom, to be seen, to be celebrated and recognizing that there is something that's being gifted to us today. There's something that wants to be acknowledged and at the root of it all is us knowing that we are deserving, that we are deserving of whatever it is that you feel that you have been lacking or that is out of reach for you or you may think i'm too wounded i'm too broken i don't deserve that right and so i just really want to mention again the impo the importance of of the language that we use and reframing things right there's a saying that says like this is happening for me not to me right so so really checking in on on uh, that, what's that agreement that is said, uh, like be impeccable with your word, right? To be impeccable with your word towards yourself, towards others, especially in your thoughts, right? Okay, to finish off, I'm gonna choose a card from this Oracle deck. It's the Archangel Metatron Oracle deck. Archangel Metatron is highly associated with the Ascension process and sacred geometry with balance and um he is also the ruler of the sephiroth of kether which is the highest sephiroth on the tree of life according to kabbalah um so yeah let's see what archangel metatron has in store for us dear beloved archangel metatron what loving guidance do you have for the collective today okay endings you are held So we can see like a dock there and it could be a sunset, could be a sunrise. Every ending and beginning is kind of like the same thing. They're kind of mixed up together. So I guess it's really depending on your perception if, if this is a sunrise or if it's a sunset. 45. <clears throat> You know you have reached the end of a road when you have nothing left to give. No more energy to fight, no desire to turn around in present day fortunes. Just a need to clean break from the past or whatever no longer serves you. What you face with the ending now presenting in your life is a path to freedom. Yet it feels daunting and an uncharted ter territory about which you have no understanding. It feels safer to stay with what you know. The jetty out to the sea of this card is offering an interesting vista but you would like to turn around and go back rather than jump into the new. Metatron asks you to look again and see whether this ending is your choice or whether it has been brought upon you, as there is no real way back anymore. The energy has shifted and moved on, and so must you. It may have to do with any area of your life, relationships, job, residence, health, life stage. We may... We face many endings in life. The lesson is knowing how to adapt to change and yield when necessary. Put aside your doubt and fears. It is understandable that they feel real to you now, but they are only an illusion keeping you in prison where you are with no compass to steer you forward. Walk the bridge and you do so with Metatron at your side. The sunset in the evening sky telling you that the day is closing and the evening beckons. It is time. There will be a new day and after the, after the darkness, the sun will come up back again. Endings are necessary. It says, be like the birds in the sky who know when the season has changed and migration to a different place is needed. This is the way of it all and you're urged to look in at what is ending in your life right now and fly free to the next opportunity or life stage. All is well. So that's quite beautiful. Um, you know, I feel that this is even kind of related to yesterday's reading where they were kind of asking or guiding us to kind of like release old behavioral patterns that no longer serve us anymore. 
um, and you know, kind of like the beheading of the ego and just kind of continuing on our, on our path. And I feel that perhaps maybe today some of us have really come to terms with whatever it was asked to be sacrificed or to released. You know, yesterday was all about releasing. And so once we finally like release the grip of things and we rephrase or see things from a different perception, uh, we can allow endings and beginnings to happen, right? And that is all about us being able to recognize what's around us, the real gifts that are around us and blossoming, being seen, being celebrated by everybody else, by heightening our intuition and eventually being free, being luminous, you know, purging, releasing, coming into a new state of self and ultimately remembering that we are deserving and the importance of, of the language we use to, 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 to understand ourselves, to understand our life around us. So I hope that this was useful to you. Uh, if you would like to comment, share, or subscribe, that would be great. So I'll be back here tomorrow. Bye.